what you pretty much used it with the uh, standard vacuum meter planter. Um, and a lot of the features are the same. The one difference this one has is it is a 5 MP off the electric, uh, electric drive of this type of meter. Uh, these are available at the retrofit kit. Um, you can talk to your sales guys a little more about that. Uh, we don't have more detailed prices and things like that. But it is a somewhat economical option to upgrade to the electric drive and get the advancements advantages of that electric drive. Um, keeping in mind that this meter is not designed for the high speed like the uh, electric match or electric merge meter is. Um, so anyhow, it has the same cover pretty much for the most part. Seal inside. Um, clean the seals every year when you're done. That's a great thing to recommend. If you want to keep them clean, they'll keep them a little more soft, make them last a little bit longer. The lifetime on them is pretty good. They seem to go several years. Um, if you start noticing some grooming or um, just any cracking, using the corners here, they may start to crack. That's a good time to replace them. You can just pop them right out, slip new ones right back in. They're not hard to replace. Uh, the knockout wheels here, pretty similar like it has been. Newer planters now are nice. They um, just slip right in and out. No tools. A little clap in there. You just push back and pull the thing right out. Uh, this one's designed for the Promac 40. Um, so you want to make sure if you've got Promac 40, you've got the right knockout for them. The uh, seat disc has been around for quite a few years. A lot of guys use them. These have proven to be very accurate. They snap in, of course, like normal. Um, snap them in. You want to set the disc to the meter. Um, and once they're set, they uh, will last several years once again without any kind of adjustments normally. You just want to make sure you it with a slight drag to the meter. If you need to adjust it, we can do that. Pretty quickly also, a uh, little hitch pin in here. This here, basically like a nut on the bolt, you pull the hitch pin out, you can adjust it, turn it in, bring the meter, the disc of the meter closer, or if you do, you can uh, move it back out. Um, yeah, it usually works pretty good. Sometimes as they get older, they get a little stiffer, harder to turn, but they will adjust okay. Once again, inside the meter, you got the, this one's fairly simple. Um, it's got one brush. Again, you can snap that out very easily. You just want to look at it, make sure the bristles are good. If they start seeing thin spots, like hair getting thin, time to replace that brush. So you just pull her out, snip a new one back in, and you're good to go. Keeping in mind, there is a notch on one end of the brush, and you want to make sure you get that notch back the same way. Uh, it comes to this end here. Not a big deal. Inside here, there's a baffle. Uh, designed for different crops, um, never really change it for corn beans, it's always in the same spot for the most part. So I don't think that will be the issue. Um, here on the back side, we got the little plastic deal, it's got all these nice little slots in there to let air in and out. It's important to keep them clean for a proper vacuum. Um, a couple years ago, we had some real issues with the rows next to the back meters, where it was exhausting, creating so much uh, world in the fact, especially where you had a lot of dead, dry corn stalks, and it was actually getting into the meters, plugging these up, and then the seed performance fell off, the population dropped off. Um, so the, uh, these are now, the newer ones are a little better, they got the whole deal. Um, EPA kind of mandates it has supposed to be down, but if it needed to be adjusted where it wasn't making such a whirlwind, I, would probably just do that myself. Um, I think that would be an option. Let's see. Oh yeah, the electric drive deal. Um, it's really very simple to take on and off. Just got one little latch. Um, this connector point here just matches right up. So you just unlatch it, take your back hose off, pop the thing right off. Comes off real simple and easy. Um, here on the back is our double illuminator adjustment. 
just came out with a couple years. Um, on the number five adjustment is where we would set the initial adjustment for your 316 on the illuminator onto your seat hole, and you can adjust it down from there or up from there. And you have half knots between each number, so it can go from zero to 10. So I don't think many times you really use that much of the range. Five is a, should be the good place to uh, start. When the planter's new, we double check them and adjust them if we have to to make sure that the initial setting is correct. Oh, and then we got this little rubber piece here that goes on, of course, just to keep the suns from going down and uh, interfering with your seat tube sensors. Cool. Um, so any questions on that style of meter? Um, it's a lot basic meter. A lot of it's just like it's been for quite a few years, but it is made now for the ME5, and so you can upgrade to get to the advantage of the electric drive. No questions? Uh, Andy will talk about the exact meter. All right, what we got here is the, uh, the new exact merge meters. The, this one's been updated. It's new off of this planner. Um, the wear points and settings on this are quite a bit different than what the, uh, the original meters were. You get this disc on here, and you turn it. You get it locked down. You want you don't want to uh, spin it. You don't want any. You want Quite a bit of drag. You don't want to have any degree stem on it. And the settings on that are exactly the same as the old meter. You pull the hairpin out, move the meter, or the hub up or down to get the meter disc closer or further away from the power. Uh, with that disc or bowl, I guess they call it. Riding tight against the housing, they've got four wear pads on here. Uh, when they get down to the housing, where you start to see a little bit of rubbing on the housing, they want it replaced. Um, say these two are not wearing, but these two are lower, you can actually swap them and move them around so you get a little bit more wear out of them that way. And then when you're switching from corn to soybeans. This is a corn uh, agitation strip. The old black ones, they will last about 2,500 acres and you'll need to replace them. I can't give you an acre count on the yellow ones, how long they last. They're supposed to last longer. But they snap in and out really easy. There's three tabs. You just snap back in these holes and uh, really two, two hands. Uh, the bean one is a smooth one, it does not have the agitation on it. <coughs> and then there's a, a knockout wheel on this that would go in the, uh, the cover here. It just snaps back in. There is no change between the uh, beans and the corn. The only change you do is you change the disc and then your rumble strip and your double eliminator here. If you're in beans, the double eliminator goes all the way down, and then if you're in corn, there's three different settings on where that would go. Um, checking to see what the wear on it is, this, this finger here on the longer ones, the three fingers, are 17 and a half millimeters, and then on the others, the inside one, if they call it, those are eight millimeters long, and those are worn down past that, so it's time to replace them. When you're storing them in the winter, I would rather see them on the plant. I have seen where they've been put on a pallet and mice get in there. They chew off the double laminators, they chew on the plastic, they chew on the rubber insert in here. They, they do quite a bit of damage in short time. So. Uh, the disc itself should last quite a few years. Um, when these taller tabs are starting to wear down and, or break them off or anything, it needs to be replaced because that helps to get the seed turned up and get it up onto the seed disc to, to plant. Um, on every year on the back side as well on the uh, other disc, you can use 
flip plate or uh, grab my a lubricant on the back, spray it on. That will help keep the seal better. It will help keep everything turning easier. On um, this seal here, I have not seen one more out yet. It's gone through about 10,000 acres, so it, it, they wear quite long. Um, it pops in and out just the same way. If you're starting to see a split thin spot or crack or whatnot, it might be, be behind you to replace it. On the double eliminator itself, if the fingers are starting to wear off, or the points are starting to wear off, or are broken, you got to replace the wheel. You can get just the wheel, or if it's loose, you need to replace it as well. On the brush belt, we have a brush here. Every year when you get done with it, the owner's manual says to release the tank and have the arrow pointing up. We have also been told that it would be better to take it out and have it on like an eight inch piece of PVC pipe so that they are not getting pinched and getting a form that way. I've seen it done both ways and they seem to work okay either way, so whichever way you would like to do it is fine. Uh, when you take and you want to check these out, you want to check the brush belt conditioner. If it's worn halfway through, you need to replace that just so that it doesn't break off part way through season, and then you wouldn't have anything to clean the brush out if you got stuff in it. Um, checking the seed eye, you can take it out, but when you put it back in, Make sure that the little tab that's on the steel uh, liner goes up in the pocket. Because if it's on the inside, it will create a bridge and then you'll get a lot of bridging up and seeds binding and not planted good. Also, if you do take it out to inspect it, check the glass. The glass is replaceable. If the window is real cloudy and you cannot get it to come clean with some glass cleaner or a soft cloth or something, it needs to be replaced, and you can just replace, take the four screws off, and get a new window. Um, with that, I guess that's pretty much everything on the airplane side. If anyone has got any questions. Oh, we're just thinking. Uh, with the exacting word meter now, um, they're recommending the 820 cal. Um, they want that graphite in there for good lubrication on the meters. Um, so we thought we'd just point that out. Um, we got several customers, a lot of customers that are using the 820, people with the older planters, um, and having very good luck. Um, few of them say, in fact, they won't use anything else. <coughs> so that's something that, and there's some new product too, more EPA friendly. Environmentally friendly products out there also. So something that won't be lubricated by it, just as good, only a little more environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, any questions at all on the meters? I think so. Any idea how long the belt will last? Long time to tell. I've got one with 10,000 meters. Yeah. Yeah, I think somebody here once commented that he had some planters on 25,000 acres. That's not to say that every belt will go that long. So generally, the wear on them has been very good. They had some issues the first year with them, and the um, product improvements have been done to them. Um, so last year they ran pretty well, um, in fact, very well overall. So any other questions? Uh, I guess Brad, do you, Brad? I think one thing they kind of, they're supposed to last as long as the owners are. They're supposed to last actually. Yeah. We're going to step down and uh, go over a few things.